The End of All Things is the sixth and final book of John Scalzi's Old Man's War series. It's a collection of four novellas, one of which is great, two of which are really good, and one that is fine, but totally unnecessary. This book is quite a bit more thematically cohesive than the human division as a whole, and as such, I enjoyed it quite a bit more. In many ways, it also feels like the culmination of all the events of the human division. So it's sort of a retroactive payoff for all the plot threads the human division left dangling. So without further ado, let's get into what worked for me and what didn't. Okay, the first story is called The Life of the Mind, and it follows Rafe Daqueen, a pilot who becomes a brain in a box after his consciousness is removed from his body and transferred into the command center of a spaceship. Rafe details the story of how he was manipulated into serving as an unwitting accomplice to a shadowy group attempting to sabotage the incredibly fragile peace between the Colonial Union and the Conclave. He manages to cleverly outwit his captors by hacking into his own systems in order to communicate with the Colonial Defense Forces and expose the plot to start a war between the Colonial Union and the Conclave before it's too late. The Life of the Mind explores themes of identity, autonomy, and the essence of humanity. These are all themes that are found in abundance throughout the entirety of the Old Man's War series. Rafe's transformation into a disembodied consciousness raises questions about what it means to be human and the value of a tangible physical existence. The novella also looks at themes of manipulation and the dangers of unchecked power. Harry Wilson makes an appearance here to show that the Colonial Union, despite their shortcomings, are in fact the good guys and that everything is connected. Overall, I really enjoyed this story and would easily give it four and a half stars out of five. The next story, This Hollow Union, shifts focus to the Conclave, specifically to everyone's favorite ten-foot-tall second-in-command, Hafty Sorvel, as she and General Gao navigate the treacherous political landscape following the attempted sabotage orchestrated by the shadowy organization now known as Equilibrium. Gao faces internal dissent and assassination attempts, and the story's explosive climax is quite upsetting and made even more so by the story's conclusion, which contains a really shocking revelation. This Hollow Union looks at themes of leadership and the complexity of diplomacy. Again, themes that are deeply explored in both The Last Colony and Zoe's Tale. This novella also addresses the importance of trust and cooperation in a multicultural alliance, as well as the difficulties and rewards of working toward a common goal despite considerable differences. The story is also really good, and I give it another four and a half out of five. Can Long Endure, the third novella, centers on a special CDF unit tasked with quelling insurgencies on human colonies that threaten the Colonial Union's stability. This story follows Heather Lee, a character introduced in The Human Division, as she begins to question the morality of her missions and the true motives behind the Colonial Union's efforts to maintain control. The story's 
climax is a critical moment that forces Heather Lee and her unit to make a stand and choose between loyalty to their orders or their sense of justice. This story explores themes of morality, loyalty, and the costs of maintaining what amounts to an empire. The unit's growing disillusionment with their missions reflects some broader questions about the righteousness of their cause and the ethical implications of militaristic intervention. The story critiques the use of force as a means to maintain order. It's a decent story, but it seems sort of out of place here, and it's without a doubt the low point of the book. I give it three out of five stars. To Stand or Fall is the final novella, and it brings the threads of the previous stories together, focusing on diplomatic efforts to prevent a catastrophic war that could very well be the end of all things. He said the name. He said the fucking name. This story brings us back into Harry Wilson's POV, as characters from the earlier novellas, including Rafe Da Queen, Hafti Sorval, and representatives from the Conclave and Earth, work to expose the conspiracies that have fueled tensions among the factions. Their efforts result in the possibility of a new beginning based on mutual understanding and cooperation, finally breaking the cycle of mistrust, and aggression that has characterized interstellar relations thus far. This story looks at themes of reconciliation, cooperation, and the potential for change. The collaborative efforts to avert war and uncover the truth represent a hopeful vision for the future, and this emphasizes the importance of dialogue and empathy in overcoming division. This story suggests that peace is possible, but it requires the willingness to confront past mistakes and work together for the common good. This was by far the best story in the book, and I wholeheartedly give it five stars. Overall, The End of All Things presents a nuanced exploration of interstellar politics and the human condition, advocating for compassion and unity as essential to survival. When I average my ratings, The End of All Things gets a 4.25 out of 5. It's a worthy capstone to the series, and it asks readers to consider the complexities of leadership, the value of diverse perspectives, and the enduring quest for peace in a hostile and frightening universe. Okay, so I am going to go back and look at the series as a whole and do a tier ranking of all the books. I know there are a few little short stories and novellas not included in the main series that I have yet to read, and one day I may go back and read them, but honestly, I am just ready to close the book, so to speak, on Old Man's War at this point and move on. It was fun while it lasted, but I am ready for a change of scenery. With all that said, here we go. Okay, so I absolutely loved Old Man's War. It was a phenomenal and deceptively simple premise that hooks you from the first page. And while it isn't executed flawlessly by any means, the second act sags a little bit due to it essentially being a series of war vignettes. The book has an abundance of heart and manages to reach some seriously emotional heights and it is for these reasons that I place the first book in the series solidly 
in the S tier. I feel good about that. The second book, The Ghost Brigades, was a bit of an unexpected change of pace, but a welcome one. This one begins as a bit of a slower burn than the first book, and again, the execution isn't flawless as it does recede into some lengthy expositional passages at times, but the character work with both Jared Durack and Jane Sagan is incredibly well done and fantastically memorable, not to mention the beloved Zoe is introduced in this one. And the climax is so emotional and well-earned. It is for these reasons that I believe the Ghost Brigades deserves a solid spot in the A tier. As a side note, I just want to say that it's a tad disappointing that Jared Durack is never so much as mentioned again in the entire series. There is a brief passing allusion to him in the final book, but considering the unbelievably selfless sacrifice he makes, I think he deserved to be remembered by more in-universe characters and not just by me. Dirac deserved better. All right. The third book, The Last Colony, returns to the point of view of the first book's protagonist, John Perry, and it immediately feels like catching up with an old friend. This book has some pacing issues, sure, but nothing so serious as to detract too much from the enjoyment. I've said it before, and I will say it again, the Perry family is just so lovable. And while this book has its shortcomings, primarily the aforementioned pacing, it's a very good book that I enjoyed a great deal. It's not quite S tier, I don't think but it's a very solid A tier. Now, does it go ahead of or behind the Ghost Brigades? That's tough. I think it's pacing issues earns it a spot just behind the Ghost Brigades. That's my final answer. Okay, the Zoe's Tale. This one was the one I'd heard was just a cash grab and was the worst of the series. And maybe it's because I went in with relatively low expectations, but I absolutely loved Zoe's Tale. Yes, it had a sort of young adult flavor to it. Yes, it's essentially just the last colony from a different perspective, but it addresses most of, if not all, the concerns I had about the last colony. And if we're going off raw emotion alone, this was the book that made me cry the most of the entire series. In the climax, as I was reading it out loud to my wife, I was struggling to get through each sentence without sobbing. I don't want to be too stingy with my S tier rankings, but I'm not sure it's exactly S tier. But... It's a solid A tier, for sure. And I, yeah, I think it inches out Ghost Brigades as number two in the series. This is where it's going. Come at me in the comments. Okay, the human division. It was certainly the most uneven book in the series, which makes sense given it's just 13 short stories mashed together in a fix up. It's not great, but it's definitely not bad. It's by far the least memorable of the series. No offense to Harry Wilson, who is a great character. I don't want to go in and look at my star ratings and rank every single one and then average them out again to get its final tier ranking. So I think a fair place to put it is in the B tier. And frankly, that's all the more I want to talk about it. Finally, the end of all things. I just got done talking about it in this review, so you know my thoughts and you know my feelings on it. Now, does it go at the bottom of the A tier or at the top of the B? The star rating of 4.25 would suggest it should go in the A tier, right? But if I break it down, it's 
75% A tier and 25% C. I think that actually averages out to be high B tier. Yeah, that's honestly probably where it should go, all things considered. All right, that's my tier ranking of the entire Old Man's War series. I feel pretty good about it. This is objectively correct. Well, as suspected, the new teaching gig has taken as much of my time and attention away from my booktube recording and editing as I was worried it would. <laughs> so, um, yeah, sorry. Uh, it looks like at least until I get better settled, it's going to be biweekly uploads. And again, to clarify, that's every other week, not twice a week. Um, it would be cool to eventually get to a twice a week sort of deal, but I just don't edit fast enough for that. So, yep. I'm going to try to put together a small book haul and first quarter recap for next week. Hopefully I can get that edited a little faster. Uh, book hauls tend to go a little bit faster in terms of recording and editing. So we'll see. This channel um, is growing quite a bit faster than I ever expected it to. So I do want to thank everybody who has subscribed and liked and commented. It means a great deal to me. Um, and I do appreciate your patience with me as I explore this new avenue in my life as an English teacher, uh, molding young minds, trying to get <laughs> high school kids interested in literature. It's no easy feat, let me tell you. But I am enjoying it quite a bit, uh, actually a lot more than I thought I was going to. So anyway, that puts a cherry on top of my Old Man's War series reviews. Have you read these books? If so, what are your thoughts? Let me know down below. Can't wait to hear it. Can't wait to hear how I'm wrong about Zoe's tale and how much I enjoyed it. <laughs> if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Well, thank you so much for watching this. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Until then, read on. Thank you.